Hey guys, welcome to Coast. Today, let's see what chess move has RBI played in the interest rates game. On paper, a bank has a simple job, accept deposits from people like you and me and then use the same monies to disburse loans to folks who need it. But of course, it can't just play around with other people's money, right? There has to be some sort of skin in the game. So, the bank has to cuff up its own money or capital too. Because if things go south, there has to be some ownership capital involved and it's just not just the depositors hard earned rupees that's at stake. So let's say that a bank disburses loans worth rupees 100. Remember a loan is an asset for the bank because it gets interest on it and will also be repaid at a certain period. Now RBI rules state that a minimum of 9% should be set aside from the bank's coffers. This means a minimum of rupees 9 on 100 rupees loan of its own capital should be locked up for contingencies. That seems quite sensible, right? But hold on, it's actually a little more complicated than that. See, the regulators have something called risk weighting of assets. This simply means that they don't believe that all the loans are equal. For instance, if a bank doles out on home loan, it can always repossess the home if there is a default. It's the same thing with a gold loan. That's a, there's a collateral involved. On the other hand, a personal loan doesn't have any collateral. It's unsecured. This means it's more riskier than other types of loans. So the regulators say, okay, for 100 rupees worth of home loans, we will assign a risk weight of 50%. That means we consider only 50 rupees worth of its loan to be risky. So you only need to seat aside, set aside 4.5 rupees worth of your own capital, which is 9% of 50 rupees. But for personal loans, the risk weight is 100%. So if you lend 100 rupees, you need to keep 9 rupees worth of capital. Now, if you are a banker who is risk averse, you would rather put in loans that require you to put up less of your own capital. But you also know that you can charge a higher interest on a personal loan or a credit card. It's these riskier types of loans that brings in the dough. So at the end of the day, you have to figure out how to balance this tightrope. Squeeze out higher interest rates while putting up the lowest capital. So that's banking in a nutshell. And this brings us to the RBI smart move. One fine day last week, the central bank issued one of its dreaded circulars. It had decided to tweak the risk weights. That means from now, unsecured personal loans and even the money they lend to the other non-banking financial companies will have a risk weight of 125% instead of 100%. And for credit cards, the risk weight will now be 150%. The banks have to cuff up additional capital because these types of loans are considered even riskier now. So why did RBI do this you ask? Well, for a while now RBI has been tired of banks with their lending behavior and it has been this kind of nudging banks to slow down. But none of the banks followed it. So RBI simply decided to take matter into its own hands. It's changing the rules to finally force the banks to change and it will have a ripple effect. So what do we mean by this? Firstly, banks will have to set aside additional capital on personal loans and credit cards, even on loans they have issued previously. And this is a idle money. The bank doesn't earn anything from it. So to make up for this, they might end up charging a higher interest rates on the new personal loans. It's not just banks, but even the non-banking financial companies and their fintech partners like Paytm, PhonePay will be caught up in this because these entities will be hit by a double curse, both on the assets and liabilities side. You see, NBFCs first borrow quite heavily from banks. There is a liability because they have to pay it back to the banks later. And it's this money that they subsequently dole out as loans. But now, as we have told you earlier, when banks lend to NBFCs, they first have to set aside more capital due to higher risk weights. So the banks will charge a higher rate interest from NBFCs. 
Also, when the NBFCs disburse personal loans, they will need to set aside more capital as well to meet the new risk weight rules. That's a double curse. And once the NBFCs factor in the impact of paying banks a higher interest rate and then setting aside their own capital before disbursing loans, they will end up charging the final borrower a much higher interest rate. So yeah, that's the bottom line. The RBI's new rules makes borrowing more expensive for the people. And the central bank is hoping that if people have to shell out higher interest, it will slow down the demand for loans too. And that's folks how the RBI has hiked interest rates without hiking the interest rates. So thank you guys for watching the video till the end. I hope you find it useful and understood the RBI's interest rates game. Do comment down your thoughts below. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel for more such content. Until next time, take care and stay informed.